What's going on everyone? Gilman with the Vaulty Stocks back with our daily Apple update video, ticker symbol AAPL, where we take a look at how Apple stock traded today, key levels of support and resistance that we are looking at moving into the future, and based on that, what we think Apple stock could do. So real quick, if you enjoy videos like this, don't forget to hit that like button down below, subscribe to my channel if you are new, and comment down below what your thoughts on Apple are, and I'd love to chat with you guys down there. Let me hit record. We'll get right into the video. Great green day for Apple. We are up nicely on the day. Um, been waiting for this one for a while. Um, and finally, you know, starting to push up, starting to move in the right direction. And, um, you know, we're looking good overall. Markets are looking good overall. Um, I mentioned last week that April is typically a great month for stocks. Historically, I believe I said it was the second best month, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but, you know, overall, great month for stocks. And so far, um, you know, we're seeing that. So hopefully we see this continue. Um, before we get into Apple's kind of technical analysis, what I want to do is I want to focus on a couple of news. Um, so I want to focus on something related to Apple. And then I want to talk about the market for a little bit. Um, and then we'll get right into the video. So the first things first, Apple specific news is that Apple is preparing to launch an iMac that is bigger than any before um, from a leak, but that's how we get all Apple news, right? Through leaks. Um, so that's what we're seeing here, you guys. Um, currently it comes in a 25 and a 20, or 21.5 and a 27 inch. Um, maybe they'll come even bigger. Um, and it talks about a little bit uh, more about that. And the cool thing that I thought was uh, that I saw was that you know they could have larger displays without displays without actually getting bigger bodies, um, getting rid of the bezels, right? So that could be super super cool. Um, it's not been up, upgraded since 2014 when it got a new display, so that would be great to see. Um, and you know if someone's waiting for an upgrade, could cause kind of a little bit of a cycle of people buying the iMac updates, especially if it cont uh, contains the M1 processors. Um, it's unclear right now if they will, but that would be super cool. Um, next generation Apple processors. Um, like I said, right, uh, Apple with kind of them taking control of their processors, it's super cool because they're vertically integrating, right? So instead of going out to Intel and saying, hey, we want this part, going out to someone and saying, you know, where we want this part, if they can create the processor in house, they can get their apps to work a little bit better um, natively on it. So that's that's super cool. Um, quickly wanted to cover that rumor on this iMac could be amazing. I don't think that iMac is you know one of their biggest sellers by any chance, but it's still cool news to see new technologies developing. Now the other thing I want to talk about is why the S&P uh, 500 soared. So remember last week we were looking at that 400 mark and, today, er, and we got that and now we're at $406. Um, which is about 1.44% gain on the day. So we got a strong jobs report, infrastructure plans continued um, with more spending um, and continued COVID-19 vaccinations have also lifted market sentiments. Um, that, and then I think um, what we are talking about, what I also saw somewhere, and don't quote me on this, but um, Goldman Sachs came out and said, hey, inflation is already priced into the current market prices, which is great. Because uh, I think uh, starts to move up. I'll try to find that article a little bit later today if I can. I read a lot of things and I um, don't necessarily am able to kind of keep all of them for the video. So that's what we see here. Now let's get specifically right into Apple. Um, we had a nice push up today, so let's take a look and cover that. So let me get rid of the indicators here for just a second, um, and we'll get right into the video. So. In the pre-market, right, nothing was looking too crazy. We were, you know, looking all right. Um, right out of the gate, we went down a little bit to the 123s and then broke up um, and pushed up uh, slowly throughout the course of the day, visiting VWAP once, um, but continuing to be strong um, and then kind of a little bit of a pullback into the close. But what I really, really like is this right here um, because it, it pushed up into the close. Strong sentiment into the close. Did not even touch VWAP, did not even touch VWAP. Great green day, um, making a push towards the 126.65 level. So great, great. I like that, you know, we're above VWAP. We are looking pretty good overall. So now let's move on to the daily chart and we'll see what we see. Um, so great push up from Apple. Um, we actually are above um, our, you know, hit the point that we were hitting at um, and maybe saw a little bit of a breakout. We'll see. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, right? We could see a little bit of a pullback um, to kind of some of these levels before we start to take off, but great push up. We were trading within this kind of pennant. We broke out of this pennant. So now, you know, we're no longer making, uh, you know, um, 
you know, lower highs over time. So that's great to see. Now it's, it's very possible that this could be moved up to, you know, kind of be right there, the, the top end of this line. And we still, you know, trade in this pennant, but we'll see how that goes for now. Let's assume that, you know, we're out of the pennant and we are pushing up for good. RSI is looking good at 55. So now let's talk about future levels of support, future levels of resistance. And the first level that we have coming up is 126.65. Now this is pretty huge because you know the only time that we've really been above it was 316 march 16 very very briefly we did not close above it matter of fact the last time that we closed above it was the first of march the next day we came right back down below the level. so we did not visit the level all of march and at the beginning of april now we are pushing up towards that so i think this will be a pretty challenging level for us to break but i think if we can break this it really sets us up nicely for the 130 level between and, and having 128 in the middle so levels we're looking at 126.65 120.54 and 130 dollars on the downside we got this 123.69 level which again has held up had had held up as really good resistance for us throughout the course of the month of march so i'm hoping now it acts as a nice level of support for us and then we got 121.48 right below that as well if we keep dropping now look at this it's it's moving up we're moving up really really nicely um in the after hours as well so hopefully we see that continue uh this week as well so my goal for Apple this week, let me actually pull out the uh, EMAs. Uh, remember last week I talked about getting above that 89 EMA. Uh, so we're now above that. That was at 124.32 with the nice almost $3 push up today. We're now above that level. So the key here is maintaining that 89 EMA 124s and kind of coming back, establishing that level of support, pushing up. We're now above all five EMAs. The first one being this one at 125 level, then 124.32 and then 124.01. So pretty close to each other. Um, what I'm hoping, or not hoping, what I'm kind of anticipating, um, we have kind of green, but it wouldn't surprise me if we see a little bit of a pullback um, before we start to push up, or maybe we push up to 126s break, and then you know kind of get to this 127.22 level, and then a little pullback to this 126.65 before we start to push up later this week. So first level for us would be kind of this 126.65. Target would be 127.22. Um, so you know if we see a green day tomorrow you know and we break 126.60s watch out for this 127 because that's the highest we were at in march so that might be a little bit challenging to break as well but if we could break that 128 uh should be you know smooth sailing from there uh, so watch out for a little bit of a pullback and then you know kind of riding up this 126.65 hopefully we have enough momentum to break it through but just in case we don't we at least know where we are you know stopping so great start to the week from Apple. Um, I I know some of you guys have asked me about you know covered calls. So let me do a quick kind of introduction to that, um, and we will you know I'll, I'll try to make a video on it sometime soon. But uh, until I can do that, let me let me make this kind of quick introduction. So this is Tastyworks. Um, if you guys like Weeble, um, the link is in the description below. But this is Tastyworks. Um, I use Tastyworks. I use TD Ameritrade. Um, and I use Webull for kind of different purposes, um, as well as a Charles Schwab account, right? I like separating my accounts based on kind of my goal. Tastyworks is great for options um, trading. So what I do is I go to Apple and here I am looking at the um, one, uh, or excuse me, April 9th, which is this upcoming Friday, so in four days. And I'm looking at the calls because I want to sell a covered calls on my Apple shares. Now, Typically, um, you know, I, I don't want to sell a call. I do want to sell a call on a green day, but I don't want to sell a call when Apple is looking really, really bullish um, because, you know, typically if, if it has a couple other, a couple more green days, you, you, could, e you could easily go over that level, right? So um, on Webull, again, if you go here, click on options, um, you know, same thing. You just go to April 9th and you'll see kind of similar, um, you know, table right here. What I like doing, and again, everyone can have their own preference based on how risky or safe or how much you love your Apple shares and or, you know, if you're OK with potentially losing them. I like going anywhere between uh, 20 and 30 Delta. Uh, this right here is percentage in the money. Um, all um, all kind of charts should have something i'm sure you know Webull has something similar as well i know for sure that you know thinkorswim does and i know that charles schwab does pretty much this is this is the, this is saying what are the chances that apple is going to be above 128 there's a 27 percent chance it'll be this this call will be in the money 
There's an 18% chance Apple will be above 129. There's a 11% chance Apple will be above 130. So there's if there's only an 11% chance, then you know 89% chance that this 130 call, which is worth about between 21 and 25 dollars right now, will be worth zero. Similarly, if you're willing to take on a bigger risk, meaning you are um, okay with getting or if you want more money, you're gonna have to take a bigger risk, which means it's 27%, so 73% chance that you are gonna be below 128 and get to keep this money. Similarly, for 127, you have an 85, uh, you get about 85, $87, depending on you know what the bid ask spread is. But here at 39% chance, we're gonna be above 127, so therefore, um, you know, 61% chance that this will expire worthless. I like going to about 20 delta, so um, about 20% chance that it will expire in the money. Um, I like those probabilities. I like the fact that 80% of the time it will be below that. And the other thing is, even if I get, if even if the 20% of the chance that it does get above it, I can always roll it out to next week, um, which means I can, you know, sell this week's and uh, or I can I can buy this week's right because you sell it right now then you buy it back and you sell next week's. So what I would do is, um, you know, this week's actually have the 127. So it's a little bit aggressive than I typically would play. Typically it would be between these two, the 128 or 129, and I aim for about, you know, 60-ish dollars. Right now I have this 127 where I got $80. So what I need technically for this covered call is Apple to be below 127. Apple is already at 126.24, so I'm only about 75 cents away from being in the money. But I'll keep you guys posted this week, right? This is this is totally okay. It's happened before. Um, if Apple does move up, great because I I have underlying shares, right, that move more than this call would move. So I'll cover that in a different video. Um, but for this week, I sold the 127. It is a bit more aggressive than I typically do. Typically, I like it at the 20%. So between 128, 129 for about 50, 60 bucks a week. Um, so this week I got about 80 bucks. I was a little bit more aggressive. Um, so 61% chance of it, you know, kind of just expiring worthless, but I'll keep you guys posted on that this week. Maybe it blows up in my face. Um, and I shouldn't have played aggressive, but as always, I'll keep you guys posted. What I really like about this, you guys, is I'm going to bring out a calculator and show you the power of covered calls. So you can see, you know, why exactly these are great. You own a hundred shares of Apple. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna scoot this over just a little bit. I'm gonna actually actually no, the price of Apple is right here as well. So let's say Apple right now is at $125.90. By doing this strategy weekly, okay, and let's say you go out to this um, 20. Let's let's go between this. This is 36. This is about 56. So let's say on average you play super conservatively and you get about 45 bucks a week. You sell the 128s or you sell the 129s, but let's, I'm gonna go in the middle of these because I usually like 20% delta. And let's say you get about 45 a week average. So I mean, sometimes you're gonna sell this one, sometimes you're gonna sell this one. $45, right? And there's 52 weeks in a year, but let's say you do it 48 weeks out of the year, which means you don't do it for four weeks, right? Some, some weeks are shorter, some weeks are holidays, right? You got Christmas, um, you got this past week where we were off Friday. So let's say you do it for 48 weeks. That means over the course of the year, you make $2,160 by doing the strategy, assuming you don't get assigned, assuming that these are always expiring worthless, which is not gonna happen, okay? I, I will tell you that it's not gonna happen. So actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just, um, actually, let's go even, even less, right? So let's say you make $45 a week, 40 weeks of the year, which means 12 weeks of the year, you're not doing the strategy. You should be able to make about 1,800 bucks, okay, $1,800. Um, and this is all really quick, so if you're not following along, I will make another video on it soon. But if you have also any questions, drop it down in the comment section, um, and I'd love to help you guys down there as always. So $1,800 is what you're making by this strategy alone, not counting any Apple price increases. If Apple goes, Apple is gonna go up, right? So if it goes from 125 to 135, that $10 difference times 100 shares is already $1,000 that you're making. But you're making $1,800 and getting to keep your shares and whatever dividend you get, 20, 30, $40 a quarter. To buy 100 shares of Apple, which is what you need to sell a covered call, I'm not gonna talk about long options. You can also buy a 2022 or 2023 call option and sell um, 
a covered call against that. It's called a poor, poor man's covered call. But I'm gonna pretend like you already own shares because you're watching these videos, so I'm, I'm hoping that you're super invested in Apple. $125.90, you have 100 shares. You guys remember I said $1,800, so you're making $1,800 divided by 12,000. 590, which means you're getting a 14.29% return, right? Let's call it 14% return on Apple's covered call strategy. Then you add any gains Apple had, then you add any dividends Apple gave, and you'll quickly, quickly see why this is an amazing strategy to follow. Now, learn it, paper trade it. If you have Apple shares, don't go out and sell cover calls now. I would highly, highly recommend you on a piece of paper go, you know, oh, this week, I would have sold 127. I would have sold super conservative, 130, 11% chance of in the money. Do that, do that next week, do that the following week, do that the fourth week. When you feel comfortable that you know what you're doing, including sometimes where you know you sell 128 and Apple is ending the week at 130, what do you do there? You roll it out, how does that work? Once you get comfortable with that, then definitely look into applying the strategy. Hope this is helpful and I hope I didn't go over it too fast. If you do have questions, drop them down in the comment section and I'd love to help with you guys, uh, help you guys down there. Um, but I'll try to make a video on it as well. So if you wanna see that, I think a couple of you guys have requested that already. Um, let me know down in the comment section as well. So hope you guys all have an amazing start to the week and I will see you tomorrow for another Apple update video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Let's remember to be a bit better every single day and until next time.